It had sat quietly rusting away in a nondescript barn in a small village in Denmark since 1959. At some point, the garage had collapsed on the car and the elements had really done their work. For 21 years, this car had sat ignored, awaiting perhaps scrapping, and no one knew its historical significance. That was until 1980. In late 1979, the owner of the car had dragged the wreck out from the remnants of the barn and stuck a for sale sign on it. In January 1980, a man who knew cars, and particularly Mercedes, got wind of its existence and arrived to purchase it. Loretz Loretzen had been an engineer for Mercedes-Benz for decades, and he had realised that the ruin from the barn was at least a significant vehicle that if restored would be a valuable and collectible item. But, like any good detective story, the more Lauritsen examined and worked on restoring the car, the more strange things he noticed and the more historically important the car became in his mind. The wreck was identified as a 1938 Mercedes-Benz Cabriolet Type B Model 320. Only 34 of these cars were manufactured, but this car had features not found on the standard model. Boot scrapers on the running boards, ashtrays, a cabin heater with a windscreen defroster and sun visors. The chassis number revealed that this particular car had been built by Mercedes at its Mannheim factory, and incredibly of the 34 built, only Lauritsen's wreck had been constructed in Mannheim, making it unique. But the question was, to whom had the Mercedes belonged? Mercedes-Benz said they had no information. The clues abounded on the car itself. Even though dilapidated, Lauritsen's trained eye could see that shoddy repairs had been made some time in the past. A bump in the right rear end had been temporarily repaired. The right side and right rear end bodywork had been repaired at some time using a lot of tin. The rear end was originally designed with an integrated frame for the rear number plate, but this had been filled out and covered by tin. And once Lauritsen had repaired the car sufficiently that it could be driven, he noticed that the right rear wheel shaft was bent. Clearly the Mercedes had suffered very serious damage earlier in its life to the right rear of the vehicle. Shoddy and cheap repairs had been made, presumably during World War II as the previous owner stated that the car had been driven to German-occupied Denmark late in the war by two German officers, and had been used briefly by the Danish resistance after the German surrender before being sold off in a military surplus sale. But who had driven this Mercedes during the war? Who had used a Mercedes-Benz 320 with these unique features and additions, as well as the damage? After much research, Lauritsen came up with a chilling name. Reinhard Heidrich, the Butcher of Prague. Even more incredibly, the old damage to the car exactly matched the damage caused by the bomb that mortally wounded Heidrich on a Prague street on the 29th of May 1942, one of the most significant events of World War II. The unique specifications on the Mannheim-equipped car, the same damage, it was incredible, the car of the second-in-command of the SS and the ruler of German-occupied Czechoslovakia had somehow wound up rotting in a country barn in rural Denmark. It seemed to be the barn find of the century. So, who was Heidrich, and why was the car significant? Reinhard Heidrich was Himmler's number two in the SS, chief of the Reich Main Security Office, controlling the Gestapo, the SS Security Police, the Sicherheitsdienst, or SD, and the Kripo, the criminal police. He would also chair the January 1942 Wannsee Conference that worked out the details of the final solution to the Jewish question, setting in motion the Holocaust. Even Hitler once described the six-foot-three-inch Heidrich as the man with the iron heart, and in September 1941 he had been appointed Deputy Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, in place of the Reich Protector Konstantin von Neurath, judged by Himmler and Hitler to be too soft on the Czechoslovaks. 
From day one, Heydrich terrorized the Czech population. The Germans needed Czech-produced weapons and were determined to stamp out resistance organizations in the former Czechoslovakia. Heydrich had hundreds executed and thousands sent to concentration camps, earning him the nickname among the Czechs of the Butcher of Prague. As well as plenty of stick, Heydrich also used some carrot to establish order, increasing food rations and pensions, and suppressing the black market. But the ultimate German plan was to remove two-thirds of Czechoslovaks to the east, so that the land could be settled by ethnic Germans. The Czech resistance and government in exile in London decided to strike at Heydrich himself. Two SOE-trained officers, one Czech, one Slovak, were parachuted into Czechoslovakia by the British, and a scheme enacted to assassinate Heydrich in Prague, called Operation Anthropoid. Heydrich was so confident that no one would ever dare lift a finger against him that he was driven around Prague in an open-top Mercedes 320, the very car Mr. Lauritsen found rotting in a barn in Denmark in 1980. On the 27th of May 1942, the assassins struck. One stepped in front of Heydrich's Mercedes, causing it to stop, and pulled out a Sten submachine gun. But the weapon jammed or misfired at the critical moment, and the assassin ran off, pursued by Heydrich's driver, Klein. In the meantime, the second assassin threw a bomb into the rear of Heydrich's Mercedes. The explosion badly wounded Heydrich. Heydrich was taken to hospital with severe injuries to his spleen, diaphragm, and left lung. After surgery, Heydrich appeared to be recovering, but then he slipped into a coma and died of sepsis on the 4th of June. The backlash was appalling. The assassins and their helpers were cornered in a Prague cathedral and killed after a long gunfight. Two villages, believed to have harboured the assassins, were destroyed, with nearly all of their inhabitants, women and children included, massacred. It has been estimated that across Czechoslovakia, about 5,000 people were killed by the Germans in revenge for Heydrich. The hastily repaired damage on Lauritsen's Mercedes exactly matched the well-documented damage to Heydrich's car caused by the modified British anti-tank mine that was flung into the rear of the car in Prague. Lauritsen spent 11 years lovingly restoring Heydrich's car back to immaculate condition. Concerning its dark past, Lauritsen was unfazed. He decided that the past, quote, was no fault of the car, unquote. In February 2018, Heydrich's Mercedes was sold by Lauritsen to the Eggholm Museum in Roskilde, Denmark, where it is on public display. But there is a problem. Since 2002, the Military Historical Institute in Prague has displayed another black Mercedes-Benz 320 that they have claimed to be Heydrich's car. Investigated by historians and car experts, they have determined that the damage on the 320 in Prague does not correctly match photographs of Heydrich's car, and indeed the Mercedes has some design features slightly different from Heydrich's unique 320. The features are only found in photographs of Heydrich's car in Prague after the bomb attack and on the 320 now in Denmark. It appears that the 320 in the Prague Museum belonged to the commandant of Theresienstadt prison and concentration camp in Czechoslovakia, SS Hauptsturmführer Heinrich Jürkel, who was hanged for war crimes in 1946. It has been damaged to make it appear to be Heydrich's vehicle. Perhaps what is more surprising is the survival to the present day of not one, but two Mercedes 320s, intimately involved in one of the darkest chapters of European history. Both cars stand as memorials to the plight of the Czechoslovak people and their brave assassination of the man with the iron heart. And in a final peculiar twist to this story, Heydrich hit the news again recently, and not because of his old car. His unmarked grave in a Berlin cemetery was recently partially dug up by personal persons unknown, though his bones were undisturbed. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. And don't forget to visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details below.